Hello everyone, this is RaySpace with more tips for Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. In this video I'm going to talk about the very first thing you should do when you actually manage to get into the game, and that is to map your controls. Now for me, the game did a reasonably good uh, job of mapping my axes, but not very good at everything else by default. It recognized my controllers, and let me talk about my controllers since uh, they're going to be different from yours, but I'm going to be try I'm going to try to be general about it and even talk about keyboard controls. So this is my joystick. This is a Thrustmaster TCA side stick Airbus edition, and uh, it's pricey, but that's because it is easy to move around. It doesn't have as much resistance, but it settles into center very well. It doesn't have too much play. We'll talk about uh, what happens when your joystick has a lot of extra wiggle in it and what to do about that. But uh, cheaper ones are just fine. Uh, there is a way around any possible quirks that those might have. Uh, but the way this works is that the main stick, if you push forward and back, it'll pitch your aircraft up and down. And then if you go side to side on the stick, then it'll roll your aircraft, which is the main way we turn. And if you twist the stick, you can actually twist the stick. That's the third axis of rotation, and that's the yaw. That's what the rudder does, and that's mainly to stabilize things in the direction that you want to go in. And then it also has this little throttle level lever at the bottom. So you don't need a separate throttle. You can use that little slider at the bottom there. But I use this uh, Logitech SciTech Pro Flight Throttle Quadrant, and you don't need anything this complicated, but it's, it's nice. Uh, it also gives me extra buttons, and with all the controls we have, more buttons are good. And basically one lever is for the throttle, and then another is for the mixture, and another is for pro propeller pitch, and it's mainly made to suit general aviation planes. But you can map the levers to whatever you want. And the buttons at the bottom, I generally use uh, these buttons here for the landing gear, up and down, and then flaps, and then the top one on the other side there to be the spoilers, and the bottom one to be the parking brake. Uh, for the main brakes, I actually use the main trigger on the joystick. Uh, but since this is not a sim where we're going to be firing guns or anything. Uh, that's normally okay. And I big use the red button on the joystick for the afterburner for planes, generally speaking. So that's my setup, but let's talk about where we access all the controls and how to do things. So in here, the first thing that you want to go to is flight control surfaces. And let's talk about keyboard first. Uh, so what you want is the primary control surfaces and what you're mapping is the aileron, left and right, uh, that'll be for the keyboard, and it's got for A and D, and then number pad four and six. So this is to roll left and right, so this is your turning. So A and D is natural. Uh, if you're not going to be on keyboard, you're going to map this to aileron axis, uh, not left and right. And um, the rudder, we have a rudder axis here, but then it puts rudder left and right down here for some reason. They should probably cluster it together somehow, but anyway, uh, the rudder uh, is going to be to stabilize when you're on the runway or when you're approaching the runway or also to have a controlled turn, uh, just to a coordinated turn. So that's Q and E, that'll just shift your nose from side to side, and then the elevator to pitch W and S. That's fairly simple. And centering the rudder is also important. Remember how to do that because uh, if you push it off to one side, you'll probably want to center it pretty soon. Uh, so the aileron axis they've uh, placed down here. Uh, for my joystick, you'll see that I've just got the rudder axis mapped to the twist, which is Z axis in this case, and then the aileron and elevator X and Y. So if you find that your aircraft is a little bit twitchy, you can tweak that using the little gear icon on the side of any of these axes. And what you'll note is this inverted axis, just in case you've got the opposite, like if you're pushing down on the stick and it's going up, or uh, if you're going left and it's going right, you can invert the axis there, that's important. And then tweak action curve is where you tweak the sensitivity of the situation. 
if you've got a little bit of play in your joystick, by which I mean when it's centered, it can wiggle a little bit, even though you don't intend to. Like, it'll be a little bit off to one side or something like that. The spring isn't quite as spry as it used to be. Uh, you can add a dead zone here. And what that does is, is it flattens this curve here so that in that region, the joystick won't actually do anything. And so you can make it fairly tight. This is pretty normal, 0.05 or 0.1. And um, for the aileron axis, I wouldn't do that, but for the rudder axis, I might. Um, but if you find that uh, it's just wiggling around too much, you can do that. Or you can change the sensitivity of the curve. The sensitivity plus is for when you're going on one side, and the sensitivity minus is if you're going on the other side. So when you change this, you can see it changes this side of the curve, and this will change that side of the curve. And if you reduce the sensitivity, that means that when you deflect the stick and of course you can't do this with keyboard keyboard is just digital so it's a either off or on and that's one of the benefits of the joystick and why flight simmers use it is because the the keyboard is just going to deflect the control surface one time or if you keep holding it down it'll just keep it deflected but there's no subtlety to it there's no way you can uh, deflect the surface a little bit or you'll have to pump the key you know, you'll have to press a little, press a little, press a little in order to get the same effect, and so that's not quite as nice. Uh, but here, if you deflect the stick just a little bit, it won't do as much, but then it'll increase in effectiveness if you really deflect it, like if you're in a fire plane and you're really forcing it, uh, then it'll increase the sensitivity on the outer end. The same with the downside. Uh, or you can uh, do the opposite. You can say that, well, I really want it to be more effective closer in uh, if you really want higher responsiveness. Generally, that's not a good idea, but uh, in some planes, maybe uh, like some of the heavier planes, maybe you're finding that it's really hard to turn and you don't want to constantly push your joystick really hard, uh, then you can increase it like that so that the plane is more responsive, uh, even though it's a heavy plane. Uh, and you don't have to use as much of your stick. So, yeah, that's the dead zone. And there's also extremity dead zone, which is to tell it to uh, not do so much at the other end. So you can tilt the whole curve like that. So those are ways to tweak your axes. And that basically handles the main controls. So either in keyboard, you're going to have the ADWSQE as normal or you can have these axes like this, or you can set up your controller uh, with whatever, uh, you can use the um, axes for whatever you like. It depends on you on the controllers because they don't have three axes to work with. They have two, generally speaking. So you're gonna have to decide what to do about the rudder. Uh, normally for the controller, I only use it for the drone camera. That's what I use it for, to uh, control the drone camera. And for that, it's already set up properly most of the time. Uh, the next most important controls, aside from the three axes to control the rotation of the plane, are the throttle. And so power management is where the throttle is. So throttle, uh, by default in uh, Flight Sim for the longest time, F1 is no throttle, F2 is decrease, F3 is increase, and F4 is full throttle. I don't know why they've called it uh, Previous detente and next detente. Uh, that's overcomplicating things from what I think it ought to be. But anyway, th those are traditional for flight sim. In fact, some other sims have picked up on it and used the same ones. And in general, if you're doing other flight sims, you should probably try to map everything the same uh, from what you're used to so that when you're going to reach the landing gear, you don't go, oh, that's for that flight sim and not for this flight sim and stuff like that. So. For the throttle quadrant, of course, uh, you just need to map the throttle axis to whatever, well, this is my throttle quadrant, um, th map the throttle axis, but you can also map the individual throttles, like I have three, I could map them individually, but I actually just map them all to the same one in this case. And I haven't gone through three and four because this one should apply to all of them. Incidentally, the number two means that it's also being assigned to two other things. If you want to figure that out, you can search by input, move the control if it responds, and then you'll find those. If you 
press search by input and then wiggle your mouse, it'll cancel the scan. So leave, uh, leave your mouse steady and then wiggle the control and then you'll find the control that you're looking for. Under the power management, there are more complicated things, uh, which is what we assign the other levers for general aviation to be. The mixture axis changes the fuel mixture in the plane. Not, uh, most planes, you don't have to worry about this. Some planes you do. If you're flying an airliner, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, but the mixture axis, though it's a convenient way to shut down the plane because actually shutting the mi mixture axis all the way down cuts off the fuel, generally speaking. But uh, so I've got that on one of the axes on my throttle quadrant and then uh, you don't have to map any of these unless you really want to control the mixture individually but most of us do not have enough controls available to us to do that unless you've got a full cockpit sort of situation and so the other uh, thing that I have mapped is the propeller axis and that will change the RPM of the engine and that can be important sometimes uh, on propeller planes to control the RPM. Most of the time I move the propeller axis. At, there's usually a correct propeller setting for different things, but normally I just move the propeller axis in tandem with the throttle. So I move them both at the same time. Uh, so the RPM goes down when I lower the throttle and that's that. So that's a simple way of doing it. All right, so those are the power settings that you have to worry about. And then there's the trimming. Now, if you find that it's really hard to just keep the plane level when you're trying to be in level flight with your joystick, that's probably because you haven't got the plane trimmed. And here we see that I don't have it on my throttle quadrant because uh, the way I trim things is with the hat switch, that little switch there on the joystick. And you don't have to worry so much about rudder trim except except for really powerful warbirds from World War II. Then you might want to trim the rudder so that uh, on takeoff... Uh, actually, I don't trim the rudder, I just move the, uh, I, I move the rudder control so that it doesn't sway to one side or another because the power of the engine tends to turn the plane to one side. And that's the one time where you really, really want rudder trim. Uh, aileron trim is to turn the plane without actually using the full force of the joystick and elevator trim is to go up and down and so these are more precise ways to keep the aircraft level and so most of the time when I'm flying I'm not moving the whole joystick I'm actually just moving the little hat switch at the top and if you have a controller you probably should use the little X uh, or whatever they call it uh, to do this is probably the best thing to do and um, that'll trim the plane and at a certain speed with certain ambient conditions as long as you've trimmed the plane, plane properly it'll stay level pretty well and then if you want to go up or down in fact this is how the autopilot controls the plane it doesn't move the stick it changes the trim uh, in order to turn the plane one way or another or pitch up and down so you should do that too. Uh, it's more stable and more pleasant for your uh, passengers. And so it's important to map those. If you're on keyboard, uh, they've got on J and L for the aileron and I and K for the elevator. And they've actually got the rudder set as well. So uh, it's the other set of six that we're used to using. And yeah, that's how you'll control those. If you're happy with that, that's fine. Uh, the next thing to think about, aside from the trim, is your views. And so, we the camera. And there's a lot of camera settings. I've already mentioned the drone camera, which I use the controller for, and that's mostly set up okay. Uh, aside from that, you want to be able to switch between the internal view and external view, probably. And normally that's set to end. So that'll toggle between the two, and then toggling the drone is Shift X. Ah, they do have the toggle HUD view. I should use that more often. Probably I I need to map that would be good. And so there are other toggles here, but mainly going in and out is the big thing. And shifting your your view from side to side is helpful sometimes. There are pre-mapped uh, settings for custom cameras 
and you can change those. But generally those are uh, control one through zero and then shift with a whole bunch of stuff. Here we see, uh, yeah, okay, so translating your cockpit camera is shift, W, A, S, and D, Q, and E. Uh, so you can move your view in the cockpit using shift and those keys. But be careful not to turn the plane like that. So it's possible that you might want to remap those instead of maybe using the numpad for the controls. If you're used to using W, A, S, and D for the main controls of the plane with the keyboard, you can use the numpad, change these uh, view settings to the numpad so that you don't accidentally like turn the plane when you're trying to change your view. Uh, that would be a good thing to do. But I haven't done that. I probably should actually. So, once you've got your view set up, there are the other controls that you need to worry about in the course of flight, and that is the... Well, let's actually use the search setting. Gear. Landing gear. Well, you'll want to make sure to set up your landing gear, and I've got that on my throttle quadrant in my case, gear up and gear down. I have them separate uh, just to make absolutely sure that I know the state of them. So, uh, uh, flaps. So type in flaps. And then increase and decrease flaps is what I have there on the second set of buttons. And then you should set up spoilers. And it does call it spoiler, not air brake. And just toggle spoilers is fine. So that'll extend them or de uh, retract them. And then parking brake. So we'll toggle parking brakes, I've got that on that. Um, toggle parking brake is control space now. It used to be control period. At least other sims had a control period. And then just the brake. Now remember, I've got the brake mapped to the main trigger on the joystick, uh, but the brake is just space bar for keyboard. And I've got a joystick button one. So I've got the brakes like that. Different mods will have different requirements for what they want the controls to be set up as, so you'll have to pay attention to that. Um, and different planes will have different needs, and so you can set up different control profiles and switch between them for different planes, but uh, you should probably have a general profile that you apply to all aircraft. Now, oh, and uh, one other thing I should mention before I go on to that tangent is actually your flashlight. Uh, if it's dark, and you're starting from scratch, uh, you'll need to make sure you know the button for flashlight so that you can see in the dark. And that's Alt-F. Uh, I wish it was Alt-L. I don't know what Alt-L is. Looks like Alt-L isn't being used. That makes a lot of sense, but I guess they did F for flashlight. Let, let me just do both. <laughs> Alt-F or Alt-L. Alright, so that's the flashlight. And so then you can see inside so you can turn on the other lights. Uh, so that's important. Oh, that's interesting. They've got the ornithopter thing here for that. Does that mean that we're going to get the Dune stuff or not? That's interesting. I didn't think we were going to get Dune, but they've got ornithopter there. So there are many other uh, controls like the liquid drop system. And what I wanted to move on next is if you go to a different... Uh, see, it said apply to all aircraft, right? When when we looked at the, at, at the controls, it said apply to all aircraft here they're not all aircraft and so that's not going to be applied to helicopters or or lighter than air craft so you're going to have to do, do those separately so each of these categories is going to be different i guess they treat gliders as something separate than airplane potentially so double check that but if we want to fly the airship and then we go into here well, the airship is going to be completely different. Like, if we take a look at the flight quadrant, power management, throttle settings... Well, it doesn't have the throttle axis mapped the way I do for the aircraft. It has throttle 1 on one axis and throttle 2 on another axis. So if you have two engines, they operate separately. In the case of the skyship, though, that's a good thing because that will help you turn, <laughs> right? Uh, it might be important to have them on different axes because the rudder on the skyship isn't that powerful and r uh, changing the throttle on the engines will actually help you turn the whole thing. So stuff like that 
as important. Um, with helicopters, it's completely different. I'm not gonna go through every single thing, but I'll show you what I've got for the helicopter. Um, uh, well, let me just uh, say the general flight control surfaces for the Skyship. Uh, they've got a horizontal thrust vector and vertical thrust vector change. Uh, so keep them. I haven't mapped that yet, so don't go with that for me. Uh, I do have the rudder axis here, but it's actually the left and right on the joystick, what we normally use for roll instead of the twist because um, there we don't want to roll the skyship basically so then we use the main turning on the stick for the rudder and it's got the elevator as well but the aileron isn't even mapped by default because we don't want to roll the thing so that's important to note and then if we go to a helicopter we see the cyclic lateral axis, cyclic longitudinal ax axis, and the tail rotor. So the tail rotor basically acts as your rudder, and it's super important because depending on how much throttle you give the helicopter, it's going to want to yaw right or left. So it's much more important than with the planes. And then cyclic longitudinal and lateral are basically what you think of as turning, pitch down, pitch up, left and right. Uh, so that's fairly normal, but it's important to note the increased use of the rudder axis and maybe you would want to change that. Uh, it depends on how you feel about that. Power management with helicopters. Uh, you'll see that the throttle isn't actually set as an axis here. It's not called the throttle, it's the collective. I do have this on the second one. And the division of labor, uh, that, that's a whole helicopter tutorial. So I'll just tell you that those are the mapping. This is the one that you normally think of as the throttle. And this one is also the throttle. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll, yeah, a helicopter tutorial might be beyond me because I'm not a helicopter expert. All right, so that's a basic overview of setting up the controls. I, uh, I, I don't know if there's anything I've forgotten, maybe. Uh, probably. There's tons and tons of controls. Those are just the most important things that you have to know what the mappings are before you start flying and make sure that it's all right as far as you're concerned. And each of the axes you can tweak. So if you feel like it's not feeling right to you, you can tweak that curve to help yourself out. And that's the most important thing. And that applies to many sims like DCS World. You need to map every plane and tweak the curves and all that. Um, yeah, so that's just something in flight sims we all need to get used to doing. The sim just doesn't do it automatically to our satisfaction. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.